Billy, what are we doing here? We come here every day. No, not every day. Well, not every day, but almost. Well, I'm excited. Of course you are. It's I not every day you get to buy a convent. It's not. You can hear uh, footsteps running. Oh, really? Yep. So Kim said she heard people running above her head in the hallway. Go and have a look upstairs quickly. One year ago, we bought an 18th century convent in the north of France. For 13 years, it had sat empty, abandoned by the order of nuns who owned it. I must admit, it is a little bit spooky walking around this place on your own. Um, I don't think I would enjoy walking around here at night. As we started work trying to reclaim it back from nature, we started to notice things, things we cannot explain. We could hear doors slamming and footsteps on the upper floors. Objects were constantly moved. Regardless of what was happening, we carried on with work. We blamed it on the drafty old building and thought nothing of it as we carried on renovating. We started with the old medical ward, converting it into a modern office. As we renovated the old medical ward into an office, we discovered a few hidden secrets. The convent was a beacon of hope amidst the darkness of World War II. With a hundred beds made available and their unwavering commitment to provide round-the-clock care. Their tireless efforts to tend to the soldiers, often in difficult and dangerous conditions, were nothing short of heroic.
The medical facility was a last refuge for the nuns, who were in their twilight of their lives and had been forced to abandon their once vast home. The nuns had dedicated their lives to serving the community, but as they grew older and their numbers dwindled, they found themselves unable to continue caring for their sprawling residents. The medical facility was their final resting place, a somber reminder of the fleeting nature of life. It was a place of bittersweet endings and tearful goodbyes, a poignant reminder of the sacrifices these women had made throughout their lives. As we neared completion of the office, we decided to reconstitute the bell in the bell tower. It was removed when the chapel was deconsecrated. We managed to source a large bronze bell from the 19th century, which would have been a similar size to the original. The only problem was it didn't have the original headstock, so we had to manufacture one. The next problem was getting it into the bell tower. It's a really exciting point in the project now. We're about to go down. 
put the headstock on the bell, make sure it's bolted down perfectly. And then I'm gonna be up here and we're gonna winch the bell up. Nobody is allowed below the bell, just in case the unthinkable happens, but it should go smoothly and hopefully that my measurements are correct. After a whole year of taming nature, ghost hunting and renovating, we have started work on the convent's original kitchen. Hopefully as we progress, the community of nuns who reside within the convent appreciate our efforts to restore their former home. I think that door there is rattling, probably because it's a little bit windy outside. This one, isn't slamming like it did last time. Can you hear that? Make a noise if you want me to leave. Make a noise if you want me to leave. Okay, that door just moved. I am going home, I think.